I'm Chris Archer, Head of Americas at the Green Investment Group, and I'm delighted to be here today to kick off our Decisive Decade content series. As we start this new decade, we're at a critical point in the, in the energy transition, and we're, we're using this content series to talk about some of the key technologies and trends that driving will drive the next 10 years. I'm joined today by Richard Jackson of Occidental Low Carbon Ventures, who's going to talk to us about carbon capture and sequestration and the role that this this sector will play in the energy transition this decade. Hi, Richard. Thanks very much for joining us. Thanks, Chris. So uh, I work as Occidental's president and general manager of our low carbon ventures team and also our enhanced oil recovery business. Uh, those of you that don't know Occidental, we're an international energy company. We have uh, core operations in the U.S., uh, also the Middle East, and uh, a good long history in Colombia. So one of the uh, unique things about Oxy is uh, we're a large carbon management company. We actually uh, consume about 20 million tons of CO2 uh, annually as part of our enhanced oil recovery operations and uh, also uh, a large infrastructure position that has provided a unique platform uh, for us to think about uh, the future, uh, low carbon future for ourselves. And uh, as we see it, a uh, tremendous opportunity for partnership in, in terms of what we do. Richard, it'd be great to understand why is the, the leader of the, the low carbon ventures business, you're also leading one of the major sort of oil production businesses, the, the enhanced uh, oil recovery business in, in Oxy as well. And, and why are those two linked? You know, really the, the first part of that, you know, starts within our own operations and the ability to produce and create uh, lower carbon intensive products. And so, you know, that, that really plays central to enhanced oil recovery. Um, as we're able to capture more emissions uh, from our carbon capture uh, projects and deploy that within our uh, operations, starting with really with our enhanced oil recovery business, uh, we, we have the opportunity to consume as much CO2 as we actually create through our operations and even the consumption uh, of our product. And so as we build upon that strategy beyond just a lower carbon product for ourselves, we think about thing, the other pieces, which is capturing carbon and sequestering it. So there are ways we can partner with people to create um, you know, sequestration opportunities to help them uh, find a lower carbon product for themselves. For instance, we're uh, working with an ethanol uh, producer in one of our carbon capture projects and by being able to capture that CO2 and sequester it in, in our enhanced oil recovery uh, uh, assets, that actually creates a lower carbon intensive product uh, for the ethanol supplier. Let's take a moment just to step back and um, talk about carbon capture and sequestration and, and and kind of all the things that it can include. I guess you know, from what, what, what I read, both the IPCC report and, um, and the IEA, most recent IEA forecasts, see a significant role for, for carbon capture and sequestration in putting the world on a sort of transition to a more sustainable level, level of CO2 in the atmosphere. Can you talk a little bit, I mean, I guess we talk about carbon capture and sequestration as quite a broad a broad term, but it includes many different technologies and sort of use cases. Could you talk a little bit about the sort of key sure. key different parts of that technology and, and the things that you, you guys are focused on? Yeah, sure. I think, you know, as we think about it, we sort of break it into three segments. There's a, a capture component and the two that, you know, we're very focused on are uh, industrial emissions or power sector emissions. So that can come from things like power generation, gas power generation, um, and then, you know, other industrial emissions uh, opportunities, things like uh, cement or steel or uh, ammonia. And so we look uh, across these sites that uh, may be advantageous uh, to, to be able to capture um, and, and deploy. And then there's a transportation component. And that's one of the real important catalysts as we put together not only the, uh, the capture and use cases, but the, the financing around this. And that's the thought around uh, the pipeline system to 
uh, be able to move CO2 and enable, you know, both the, the capture and the use. And then, and then the use cases, the enhanced oil recovery opportunity, which again has the ability to consume as much CO2 as we create, uh, both through our operations and use. Uh, but you know, uh, subsurface reservoirs, a lot of times people, and, and they are large saline reservoirs uh, that exist uh, certainly in the US, but around the world, uh, which are suitable geologically to safely store CO2. Uh, but but more excitingly, and, and maybe not at the scale yet, but I think as we're able to capture and distribute CO2 safely, um, you know, we're going to see more of this, and that's the ability to take CO2 into materials. And so you can think about that in terms of plastics or uh, other type of building materials where you actually consume CO2 as the process. You know, that's where partnerships can really be great, um, both on the capture side, certainly we work with all the um, you know, we'd like to get uh, the emitters that, that do this and enable more of that, um, you know, but also the use cases. And it may not be, um, you know, our company uh, that's utilizing the CO2, but I think as you put these pieces together, you know, the real um, scale deficiencies and even cost uh, can be shared so that we enable, you know, you know, both the capture and use cases, uh, you know, way beyond where we're at today.